Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're checking out a super versatile compressor pedal from Empress Effects. Let's get started. <laughs> Today we're checking out the Compressor Mark II pedal from Empress Effects. This pedal combines both studio sound quality as well as studio features into a compact guitar pedal. Now it offers a lot of versatility because of that, and one thing that I really like about it is it gives you a lot of visual feedback as well, so you can really tell what you're doing with the pedal, both orally, in your ears, as well as visually when you look at the pedal. And this allows you to really take control of everything when you're on stage in particular. If you've used other compressor pedals, there are a few controls and features here that you might not be familiar with, so let's take a quick tour. This is set up in basically the way that a FET style compressor in the studio would be set up. By that I mean it has an input control that obviously sets the incoming level of the signal that's going into the pedal, but that input control also determines how much compression you're applying to your signal. So we adjust that, we've got a meter here that shows us the input level. And the more we turn that up, the more compression we get. So we've got a meter that indicates input level, and then we've got a gain reduction meter that shows us how much we're squashing the signal. If we drop that input back down, less compression. Next to that we have an output control and obviously that would set the output level from the pedal. And this allows you to do everything from matching the gain input to output when you're applying compression as well as giving you the ability to boost the signal and use this to push your amp or your other effects even harder. The two middle controls aren't found on a lot of guitar pedals but they're very useful. The attack time sets how quickly the compression starts to act once you get the input actually reducing the level. This is useful because when you set that very quickly as you turn counterclockwise you're going to squash right away on the attack of the note. But if you turn that up to a higher setting, it takes longer for the compressor to get into action so your attack actually gets through. That allows you to retain the life in your sound and your pick attack, but still compress the signal for a smoother sound and for more sustain. The next control is the release control. That sets how quickly the compressor stops acting when the signal level drops below a certain threshold. If you set that low, it's going to let go of the notes quickly. If you set that longer, obviously a longer release time, and that can sometimes cause pumping and breathing effects. You may want that, you may not, but that release control allows you to dial that in and out as you prefer. Next up we have the mix control, which sets the blend between the uncompressed signal and the compressed signal, and this allows you to do what's called parallel compression. So you can really squash the signal, like I was doing during the intro to this video, but you're not losing all of the life you still have some of the dry signal blended in. So you still have dynamics, you still have your attack, but you're also getting the benefit of that compressed signal. The tone control on the Compressor Mark II is very interesting. It's actually a tilt control. What that means is as you turn it clockwise, you're boosting the treble, but you're cutting the bass. When you turn it counterclockwise, it's the reverse. You're cutting the treble and you're boosting the bass. So you can go from a very dark signal with a lot of bottom end, to a bright signal with much more controlled bottom end. We have two switches on the front panel. The first sets the compression ratio. The compression ratio basically determines how much you're compressing once the compressor starts working. If we set it all the way to the left, we're at a 2 to 1 ratio. That means that for every 2 dB of increase on the input, we get 1 dB of increase on the output. So that's used for more gentle compression kind of things. In the middle position, we have a 4 to 1 ratio. So for every 4 dB it goes up on the input, it goes up 1 dB on the output. Much more control over the actual signal level that's coming out of the pedal. At a 10 to 1 ratio, which is all the way to the right as I'm facing the pedal, you get much, much heavier compression. So for every 10 dB of increase on the input, you get 1 dB on the output. This is almost limiting, where you're basically just setting the signal at a certain level. But when you combine those three ratios with that mix control, you have a wide variety of effects you can achieve with this pedal. The last switch is very useful, and that's our sidechain high pass filter. Now in the center position, that's off. The whole signal is going through, the whole signal is being compressed. But what can happen is low frequencies, like the bottom strings on a guitar, have a lot of energy. And they can cause the compressor to trigger before the high frequencies or the high strings do. This means you can compress much more heavily than you want to if you've got a lot of bass in your signal. The high pass filter allows you to take some of that low frequency content out. It basically makes the compressor less sensitive to low frequencies. We have two settings for that. 120 hertz, which is much more gentle on the bottom end, still lets some low end get through. And 240 hertz, which is higher up, almost getting into that lower mid-range type setting, and that's going to control the bottom end much more tightly. 
One of the really cool feature with this pedal is that we actually have an insert loop that allows us to sidechain or control the compressor using an external device. A number of ways you can use this, but one common way would be to put an equalizer into that loop. If you turn up the treble on the equalizer, you make the compressor more sensitive to high frequencies and you'll control those more. Likewise, if you turn up the bottom end on the equalizer, the compressor will be more sensitive to low frequencies and you'll compress those more. You could also use the side chain insert to bring in external signals and use those to control compression. So you could control the compression using a kick drum, for example. That's a fairly common application with a compressor. But the best way to experience a pedal like this is actually hear some of the sounds. So let's check out some settings. So this setting is going to give you fairly even control over your signal. We've got a moderate amount of compression. And one thing I like about this is we can actually see how much we're compressing. My target here is about 8 dB of reduction. I can also see on my input. How much input signal I'm sending in. Now I'm set for a fairly fast attack, fairly fast release. I've got my blend set up so that I'm allowing quite a bit of dry signal, but I'm blending that compression in up underneath. I'm just basically smoothing out the overall tone. We're at a four to one ratio. I've got the side chain working at 120 hertz, and I've got my tone control set to 12 o'clock, so we're not boosting or cutting there. This gives us a nice smooth tone, but it's still dynamic. <laughs> So we're compressing fairly gently here, but it's smoothing things out, and it's giving a nice little bit of squish to the actual touch as I'm playing through the compressor. I like this setting a lot. A common application for a compressor is to get that really squashed chicken picking tone for country music. So we'll bring up our input so we have more compression. We're going to turn the attack up to let more of the pick attack or more of the transient come through so we get that snap. We'll set our release fairly fast so it lets go. When we go below the threshold, I'm going to turn the mix all the way up so all we're hearing is the compressed sound, no dry signal. We'll leave our tone where it's at. I'm going to turn this up to a 10 to 1 ratio, so we're really going to be squashing things. And let's turn that filter off. Now we'll go to our treble pickup. So we're really hitting the compressor hard. We could bring that back probably a little bit. Now let's set things up for a nice gentle compression. Now this is just going to kind of smooth your sound out. It's going to add a little bit of sweetness to the tone, if you will. So we'll dial up about the same input, but we're going to set our ratio at 2 to 1. A little bit faster attack, slower release, and we're going to stay fully compressed. We're going to set our side chain to 240 hertz. So in this case... We're just compressing a little bit there. So if we bypass, bring in the compressor, it's just evening things out, adding a little bit more sustain and controlling the peaks. It's a nice sound, especially for arpeggiated parts like that. Now we'll set things up for heavy limiting where we really want to control the signal. In this case, you might want to blend some of that dry signal back in so that we keep that attack, so that we keep some dynamics there, but it's going to give us a lot of sustain. This is also a great setting to use if you want to boost things up into an overdrive pedal to get more sustain and a little bit of a boost in your drive sound. So we'll set the attack about the same. We're going to turn our output up a little bit because we're going to squash things heavily. We'll do a very fast attack. We're going to do a quite fast release as well. Let's set our mix somewhere around 9 o'clock. We'll go to the 10 to 1 ratio, and I'm going to let the side chain be turned off in this case.
If we bypass. So it still allows you to play dynamically, but it gives you some extra beef and a lot of sustain. As you can hear and as you can see, this is a very versatile compressor pedal. It can do everything from chicken picking to transparent smooth compression to heavy squash and sustain. It can be used as a boost. There's a lot of flexibility here for setting things up for exactly the sound you want from your compressor. And I really like having that gain reduction meter to show me how much I'm really impacting my signal as I'm playing through the pedal. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.